giving you a voice, making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. First Updates Now FRC is produced in partnership with Stryker. Discover why so many FIRST alumni and mentors are putting Stryker first when it comes to their careers. Visit careers.stryker.com forward slash FIRST to view openings, internships, and co-ops tailored to those who are in FIRST. That's careers.stryker.com forward slash FIRST. And by the Blue Alliance. Keep up to date on all live and archive FIRST Robotics events and team stats at thebluealliance.com. And also, viewers like you. We need your help to keep fun loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Hey everyone, and Happy New Year. Welcome to the We The North Region Recap, rather Region Preview, to see what week one entails. Reporting for first updates now, I'm Sohib Nadim. I'm Tegan Bowles. I'm Chris. Okay. All right, so we're going to kick this off with our first discussion topic. What's new this year? There's no bag. Tegan, how about you tell me how no bag has affected the waffles this year? So something that we've had a lot of issues with this year is actually getting first on time, so we're really lucky. Um, we were able to make the most out of not having that bag restriction because it always be kind of screwed. And also, like, we've still been meeting. We meet every day. So I think I've been at a meeting probably every day for the last three weeks or so. So it's nice my first day off in a while. Um, like, we're still going ham, but we're going to you know, we'll keep on going. Our hours are a little bit less, but we also have more students this year. So we're able to make it more balanced um, amongst our students. So there's less burnout. And, uh, and we'll also have a functioning robot by week one. So, you know, all things considered, I'm enjoying it. And Chris, how about you guys? How are you guys doing down there? Our team, it's, it's been crazy as usual. We've, we've continued meeting our regular schedule for the past six weeks. Um, we kind of stopped prototyping and thinking about a climber just to get ready for a week zero event. So we're like, we got our first event is a week five. So we got a ton of extra build time. So we're like, you know, we can kind of chill on some stuff, but uh, yeah, I think we're kind of burning out a little bit. But we're, we're slowly getting there. Build's got a ton of stuff to do. Programming team has been going nuts. Um, it has been good knowing we don't have to... We'd be a little hurting if we had to put it in the bag right now. But it's not too bad. How, how's, your, how's it gone yeah. for you? Yeah, so for us, you mentioned the burnout. Um, I don't know what it is about this season. Maybe it just, like, robot issues and stuff. Um, it's just been, like, crazy busy and like a crazy stressful season um and it's my seventh one and by far it's been like the most stressful so um it's been interesting um the game's nice though so that always helps when you're playing a nice game not recycle rush um so that's obviously been nice uh we've basically stuck to our regular schedule um and tr actually tried to finish like a couple days earlier uh ran into issues here and there which happens but you know, the no bag's nice. Uh, we're happy that there's no bag so we can get some more practice in because we don't build a practice robot. So the one mm -hmm. thing I am worried about, though, is um, our robots breaking down with a lot of practice on them. You guys have any experience with that? Uh, not necessarily <laughs> from practice, uh, but our robot has had some issues. Uh, but luckily they happened this weekend instead of next weekend at week one. As you may have seen on Chief Delphi, we are having a great time. Uh, mostly, <laughs> that's mostly sort of how. Yeah, we kind of ran into the same thing at our week zero. We, we tipped over our robot and broke some stuff, but oh. it was better happening at week zero than it was at a competition. So yeah. redesigning and redoing, uh, knowing we have that extra time. We didn't build a second robot this year. In the past couple of years, we have. So it has. it's been nice just having to build one, but we're still pretty much building a second robot right now, just kind of main structures, and we'll transfer it over to the main robot as we get there. All right. So, yeah, speaking about week one, um, what do you guys think of the power cells this year? Um, like, especially, like, the compressibility. Are any of you guys shooting? Do people not want to say? 
Um, how have you guys found the experience at the Power Cells, and how do you think it'll play out week one? Um, okay, the Power Cells themselves, my biggest concern isn't necessarily, like, the compressibility of them, it's the, like, longevity of them. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see how uh, events handle that, just because, like, the balls themselves, they're basically, like, stronghold balls, but bigger, or, like, normal dodge balls. My kids seem to have had a lot of fun using them as normal dodge balls, but, um... Just in general, they're kind of something where, you know, the skin, depending on the wheels that teams are using, the skin on them, we found can, uh, some of our prototypes would rip through them better than, or I guess worse than others. So, you know, like a traction wheel or something could do a lot of damage. And if events have a lot of teams with that kind of thing, it'll be interesting to see, like, how quickly the reserve power cells get brought out. Because uh, obviously it's different to do things with, um, you know, a functioning ball versus not a functioning. Right. Yeah, I think that's going to be the uh, main thing is when, a, when just when a couple balls get swapped out and you get that fresh new one uh, between your other one, it's going to be throwing a whole lot of stuff off. I know it, when we were at Week Zero, we stuck a couple balls through our drivetrain and put some nice big holes in there. Um, my dad's field supervising at uh, Great Northern, so I'll hopefully get some intel on how they determine swapping balls out, what's too damaged, what's not damaged, so... Yeah, do you know, uh, like, cool do, have they have a way, do they have a way to determine, like, what is the allowable amount of damage? I don't or think they have like any, secret? he hasn't said anything yet, but, uh, So, yeah. there was a Q&A question asked, I believe it was by 1114, and it basically said, uh, when would the power cells be replaced? And they basically said, um, the compressibility doesn't matter, uh, when it comes to replacement, but if it's a visual, if it's visually deformed, um, they'll replace it. Now, what that entails is, I guess, whatever the field staff decides it entails. Yeah. Um, I just hope FIRST actually gives them enough replacements to have an, enough quality game pieces on the field. Um, because we had a couple different iterations of our prototypes, uh, more more backspin, less backspin, and we found that the balls just shot so differently. Um, and it's not like a year you could go to a catapult with, like, five shooters anyone good's probably going to be doing a flywheel shooter so excuse me i have a five catapult robot my robot <laughs> has five catapults on it they all fire at the same time and they all hit the inner goal so it definitely makes sense or we yeah. could see the you know, back in 2012 with the basketball which is kind of a similar ball to this year's game mm -hmm. uh during elimination rounds they would swap them all out um and then i think even in finals they would swap out to a nice fresh set of balls um, and I know one team was actually swapping complete code for new ball versus old balls that have been used to adjust their shooter speeds. So one thing I want to just do a quick check in, because I saw chat uh, polled it, is they also, because we mentioned burnout, uh, burnout being worse versus better with a no bag, because with bag you could go like ham for six weeks. Uh, so that's the one thing I want to say is, do we think burnout, I guess Sohei mentioned it's been worse. I don't know how... Chris feels maybe in Minnesota there's just no burnout and you're all perfect. <laughs> uh, but up here, I know we've definitely been feeling the pressure. Uh, I mean, we've had a pretty warm winter up here. Yeah, we've had a pretty warm winter. I think that that has to do with the burnout, not getting the Canadian winter this year. Um, sure. But <laughs> I don't think it's actually a fun like our burnout um, is a function of uh, actually going for this long. I think it's more being a little more ambitious with no bag. Um, and the ability to like practice later on, like in between events. Um, so it'll be interesting to see. I mean, this is like the first year. I'll ask me what I think in like eight weeks after champs. I'll probably say something completely different, but I think it's all right right now. How about you, Chris? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I think our team's just feeling we're like it's going to be at the same every day, Monday through Saturday. And uh, some of the days are just kind of wearing down. It's like, all right, I thought we were doing this a week ago. Why are we? doing it still mm -hmm. uh, so i think i don't know if it's just the length of time but i think sometimes we feel like we're backpedaling on some stuff uh, right. code wise and whatnot it's like uh, i thought we like, i thought we had autonomous code uh two weeks ago why are we completely redoing everything again but, eh. having autonomous codes what a dream <laughs> huh. all right we've only, we've so only taken out like 10 tables so far so that's not too bad. Um, all right, so before we move on into our who we think is going to make that first seed top 25 from our region, 
Um, I just want to ask you guys, moving into week one, what type of robot do you think is going to be successful week one? And do you think that robot is going to be successful come district champs and championships? So, Chris, I'll start with you on this one. Uh, I think I think your consistent shooters are going to be playing a big role in this one. Um, he's further weeks. Um, further out, I think uh, the balancing of the power will be there, but uh, uh, yeah, I think shooters, consistent shooters into the high goal quickly, I think are going to be uh, what people are going to be wanting to see. So, I'm probably going to have to disagree with you on this one. I think um, the shooting challenge, especially with used balls, is um, a lot more complicated than people give it credit for, especially the indexing challenge. Um, I'm going to bet the most successful robots week one um, are going to be robots that can climb reliably and maybe climb with someone else um, just because of, like, the ranking point. Uh, Tegan, what do you think? So, I don't know who else got super hyped for the first official matches of the year this year, but, like, I was up watching Israel yesterday and this morning, and something that I noticed that really would make a team stand out week one was, like, autonomous. So it didn't matter necessarily whether your shooter was like amazing or your intake was amazing. But if you had those autonomous modes, like you were fine. You're not getting close necessarily. Like week one, you might have a few uh, matchups if you have like a stacked falls alliance. Uh, but there's not a lot of stuff that's like coming anywhere near that that uh, scoring RP. So like hangers will be awesome. And anyone that has a good autonomous. doesn't even matter if you have like a low autonomous. The fact that you're scoring anything in general right now is, like, pretty OP. So, like, a climber, someone short that can drive around, or someone that even has a friggin' functional drivetrain at this point um, that has, like, either the ability to score under the trench and run cycles uh, or just someone who can do, like, a long shot. Like, anyway, like, all the time, scoring is going to be perfect. So, well, not perfect, but it's going to be yeah, really strong. Yeah, ton- yeah. Autonomous is also like the first tiebreaker this year, so right after yeah. ranking points. So I think it'll be deciding a lot of the rankings, especially at early events. All right, um, now we're going to move into our top 25 predictions, and then we're going to move into our previews. Guys, so based on what we've seen, and the videos our producer Tyler is, is playing right now, um, who do we think uh, is going to be on the FRC top 25 this year? One team each, go. Oh, 2200. Yeah. <laughs> you stole mine. <laughs> I'm the one who told you to put it in your event preview. You oh. can't tell me you stole mine. I, you stole mine. Okay, Chris. All right, Chris, how about you? <laughs> I mean, out of everybody, uh, uh, I'm terrible at predicting. I'm, I'm going to say there's going to be a couple of rookie teams that, that get up on this list, I think. I think some rookie teams are going to come out of the woodwork, get on, this, get on that top 25s what I think is going to happen. So, so, hey, if you have to pick someone who wasn't going to be 2200 to make your top five, <laughs> um, can I pick 2200 squared? <laughs> um, I'm going to go... Uh, looks pretty good. Yeah, um, I'm like going to go cheap. with... Uh, I'm going to go with uh, 610. Um, in typically, Durham, week one, come out nice and strong. So, it'll be exciting to see parts of Team 610, um, see what they can do. Looks like they have a pretty solid machine, as always, this year. Um yeah, my bet's probably 610. All righty then. Well, before we get to previews, we have an awesome sponsor segment to roll. So roll the sponsor segment, Tyler. Well, it's time to sell out, guys, and let's check out with uh, friends at Striker. So, uh, guys, if you haven't uh, if you haven't been watching fun, you know about Striker, right? Strikers are amazing friends uh, all around the world that have some incredible uh, positions posted, not just uh, for careers looking for, lots of internships as well, too. So if you go to careers.striker.com forward slash first and join the careers network there, lots of great options available. Here's the best thing about Striker. If you're in first, which if you're listening to this, I sure hope you are because first content or fun content is made for those in first. Striker wants you. They want people who are in first. They want to pay them a butt ton of money and then they want to support you for being in first. It's not a bad deal. So if you're actually volunteering events, they're going to make sure you take are taken care of. If you are uh, traveling for events, they're going to make sure you're taken care of. So Striker is an incredible company. S-T-R-Y-K-E-R.com forward slash first. Go check them out. Yes. Do all the things. Because Striker is amazing. I mean, I like, like money. So. <laughs> I mean, it's not um, hard to sell. 
But yeah, so uh, I guess we'll get right into these previews. Uh, I'll kick it off with the Great Northern Regional. All the way up in North Dakota, Grand Forks. It's a great place. Lovely time. Um, we went through North the first Dakota. year they had it. <laughs> Where is North Dakota? Uh, it's left from Minnesota, right below Canada. It, it, it's crazy. It, you know, maybe you'll find it somewhere one of these days. Um, but we got 60 teams going into this. Um, again, it's week one, so who knows what's going to happen in these matches, um, how they'll play out. Um, we got teams coming in from five states, 49 from Minnesota, six from North Dakota, one from South Dakota, one from Colorado, one from Wisconsin, and one brave Canadian team that's making their way down. So uh, four of those teams are rookie teams, uh, so they're going to be in for a real eye-opener at this competition. There's some really good teams showing up. Uh, 51-72 will be looking to bring home their third straight blue banner. Um but we'll also be seeing 4607, who beat 5172 to get to Einstein last year. So we'll see if they made another great robot. Who knows exactly what happens. Um, it'll also be exciting to see 1619 make their trip up from Colorado uh, for their debut this season. Uh, should be really cool to see how these all play out. Uh, like I said, it's going to be interesting to see how these teams adapt to modifying the robot for how the game is playing if, with the, only their 10 by 10 pit area. Can be cool to see what happens with all of that. So, Chris, you missed a next. very uh, strategic I... uh, thing there. You could have called this the Hoth Regional. You know, all Star oh. Wars scene. It's up north in the snow. You could have called this Hoth. They should just call well, it that. Actually, when I'm reca- when I when recap comes in, I will make sure to noted. Perfect. Does that mean I can call Miami Valley Tatooine because it's in the middle of nowhere, Ohio? I mean. <laughs> is Tatooine the Wasteland Planet? I, I forget which one. So. I don't know, but it had some good stuff. because it Twitch chat, Skywalker. bail us out here. Like, Twitch chat, have, bail us out. We have some good <laughs> teams here, like Luke Skywalker came from Tatooine. There's some good stuff happening here. So if you go to the Miami Valley Regional, uh, if you're there watching this weekend, there's a few things you're going to see. So it's hard to bet against uh, 340. So they'll be making their way all the way from New York State. Uh, they've got a 66% event win rate since 2017. Uh, last year, they fell a little short on the first event, only finalists. How dare they? But uh, they were, had a pretty strong performance last year. Other teams that are looking for the W4028, they came up just short of the win in the finals last year. Uh, and there's also 144, who had a really good year last year. They weren't a seeding robot, but goodness, could they play Telly off well. So those three teams are kind of like the standout ones uh, if you look at the roster. But someone that should not be underrated is actually 8027, not the droids you are looking for. Yes, they're a rookie team, but they are coming off of some incredible knowledge. Uh, They are the 2018 FLL World Champs. It's a group of brothers. They are incredibly knowledgeable. They've got a good group of people behind them. I wouldn't be surprised to see them pop off. Um, and take home definitely a rookie all-star if not make it into Elam to the captain or something crazy like that uh, kind of like the wingus and dingus of last year but uh, coming around in Ohio so uh, other than that Miami Valley it's essentially it's not necessarily anyone's game but because it's week one like people can just pop off it's hard to predict but hopefully uh, of those four you'll see at least some combination of them in the final all right, so now we're going to move on to the Durham College event where me and Tegan are actually competing this weekend, and I feel like we could both say we wish it'd be pushed back a week or maybe a couple weeks. Um, all right, so this event is stacked with some of Ontario's upper team, upper tier teams that kind of haven't broken up into that 11-14-2056 uh, echelon. So we have uh, Team 188 who had an Einstein appearance in 2016 with what Tegan mentioned was a similar game piece. And... Um, with this year, I feel like they are most, or rather I say moat, without the presence of a moat, likely to take this event with either 610 or 2200. Uh, my hot take is, out of the three, 610, 2200, and 188, two of those teams will be on the winning alliance at this event. We'll see is if I'm right. Um, what's that? What's that? Hot, is that a hot take? I think that's pretty... I could see that. It's a pretty <laughs> chill take. Um, all right, so... Uh, 610, let's talk a little bit more about them. 2013 World Champions. And I feel like this is the perfect game for 610. It's the perfect shooting, quick cycling sort of game. 
Um, one of the underdogs, though, is going to be 6135, who were the first team this year to display that awesome index here, the teams like Spectrum, 610, Mechanical Advantage, and a lot of the uh, open build teams are actually using, and it looks like it's uh, a very solid indexer. And one of their mentors is actually um, uh, an ex Celtex mentor from their Einstein finals appearance last year. So it'll be interesting to see how they do. Um, 2200, um, Tyler's going to be playing a video of them shortly, but uh, their shot looks incredibly powerful, and they have two flywheels on there. Um, here's just some video of it practicing, but it just seems they can shoot very quickly. And it also looks like they have a climber buried on there, so it'll be interesting to see how they do, and I expect them to do really, really well. Um, 4976 and 4039 are basically Ontario's uh, workhorses at this point. They do very well every year, nice, solid robots, and it'll be interesting to see how they play at a nice early event. Um, I'm going to say climbing consistency is going to be absolutely key, um, especially if the game piece problem ends up being anywhere close to what I think it's going to be. I think climbing is going to be very key, and I think towards the end of the event, uh, teams that can shoot from up close will have an advantage unless the game pieces are being regularly replaced. So um, that's pretty much all we have for tonight. Uh, thanks, everyone, for hanging out with us and talking robots. Fun needs your help to stay loud, live, and independent. Please consider giving your support to, uh, by joining Fun Nation with a subscription or bits on Twitch, becoming a Patreon at patreon.com slash firstupdatesnow, or just letting people in First Robotics know that this is a place to get your First Robotics fix. Don't forget to check us out on our Discord, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and of course, live on Twitch. If you're watching live, make sure you stick around for the Best of the West recap coming up shortly at 9 p.m. Eastern. On behalf of myself, Tegan, Chris, our producer Tyler, and the moderators in chat, I'd like to thank you for tuning in, and we'll see you next week on the We the North Region Recap. Take care, everyone. See ya. Yep. Thanks for watching. If you want more fun content, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. You can also directly help support fun by visiting our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash first updates now, or by subscribing at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Thanks to all of our co-executive producers on Patreon and Tier 2 Plus subscribers on Twitch keeping fun loud, live, and independent.